job. Get ready for the next round. What is going on everybody? Reverend Singh here and today I've got some more Call of Duty Advanced Warfare gameplay for you guys. It is some search and destroy on Biolab in ranked play. I get 11 kills, 6 deaths, nothing too spectacular but it was a pretty competitive game. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy the the, the just suspense that kind of goes on because they, we I think we go up a couple rounds and they start making a pretty good comeback uh, and then we end up winning 6-4 so I hope you guys enjoy this game playing in the background I was playing with my friends at the time and we were doing pretty good this was actually the last game I had to win before I could go into the uh, best of three to go in the platinum uh, division which I cannot seem to get that like I, I'll get there and then I'll win one and then we'll lose two or we'll just win, lose the first uh, the first two that I gotta win because of connection or something lame like that or like our fourth guy or third guy will like be like ah you know i'm getting off guys and then we'll have to we'll just try it anyway and we'll end up losing because of the two randos we get it's just like unfortunate stuff it kind of sucks but nonetheless i really like rank play in this game and i hope you guys enjoy that in the background but today it's kind of like a one-off it's not a road of prestige it's not anything in a series like that it's just i wanted to make this video because it's it's going on right now uh, they haven't played his interview yet on ABC or Good Morning America yet, but uh, uh, it, they have done the article in the New York Times and stuff like that. But we're going to talk about Mr. Matthew Nadeshot Haig today. And uh, I, I'm not like being a fanboy. I just really kind of want to point out like this is actually a big deal, not just for you know, him, obviously, but for gaming in general, like just for, for YouTube, for Twitch, for MLG in general. It's kind of a big deal because this is not often do you get someone in an esports community or youtube the youtube community he actually gets in a story that goes nationwide this this story is literally nationwide and the reason why i decided to do this was because not only is it a big deal but i was dropping to work this morning and listening to our local uh radio talk show which i normally don't because i hate the show uh but it was just some background noise to have my phone didn't connect bluetooth so for some reason so i had to re like re sync everything and I have to actually be stopped for that and in park and I didn't have time to do that while driving obviously uh, so I was just listening to it for background and they do this they're not even a news uh, show but they do this little tidbit where they uh, talk about some of the big stories going on in the in the in the country and all of a sudden the the girl doing it pops up is like this guy Matthew Haig or Nade Shot uh, is a professional Call of Duty player, and New York Times did a, an article about it. And she talked about the article. She got some of the details wrong, but big freaking deal. And it, it was just really cool. I was like, holy crap! Like me, I'm in Ohio, and our local radio talk show in the morning is talking about freaking Nade Shot being a pro Call of Duty player. That's a big. That's a nationwide story. So New York Times did this huge long story about Nade Shot. Uh, talking about how you know what he does his backstory and stuff like that and it was really cool and explaining how like I guess According to the New York Times and Forbes or something like that. He's on par to make a million dollars this year uh, Primarily from YouTube and streaming and that that's freaking awesome a lot of people look at it guys like oh is it for the money? Well duh, it's it's his job. That's what he does, but he loves his job So yeah, he's obviously gonna do a good job at it and he wants to do that I mean any it's how it goes with any youtuber if you think there is a youtuber out there who's big and famous and you watch him all the time who's not doing it for the money at all you are sadly mistaken literally anybody out there who does it for a job who doesn't go to an actual job and does youtube for the month like as their primary source of income is doing it for the money it's a business but that's not that doesn't mean they lose integrity that doesn't mean they're making bad content or anything like or it doesn't mean they don't care about their fans that just means they're doing that it's their job and that that's to me that's a really freaking cool thing and i think everybody should really support that rather than being like oh he's doing it for the money i hate people that do that there are some people some youtubers out there who are obviously doing it for the money they put no effort in they they just make some random video and there are some youtubers who do both ends of the spectrum like okay they know this thing is going to get a lot of views but it's really not a big deal uh and it's not like oh my gosh it's the end of the world so they'll put that video out it's easy to make super quick it's like two minute video 
uh, and it'll get a ton of views, but really have no like content in it and nobody it's really something that you shouldn't even care about, but it'll get tons of views because it's easy. It's something interesting sounding. Uh, lots of people do that. I think I, I've honestly done that as a joke before. Uh, and it's just a business. That's kind of the way things run, but it's really cool that he could do this. Now it's a big deal. Uh, that this story went nationwide is because there's a lot of people out there who don't exactly know that this community exists. It's also very good for, for other companies getting involved. Like, I mean, obviously you got companies like, you know, uh, Monster Energy starting to get involved. They sponsor Team Envious, uh, and they sponsor other esports, uh, guys like League of Legends guys. And then you got Red Bull who sponsors like two people. They sponsor, uh, Nate Shot and they sponsor, I, I'm pretty sure they still fl sponsor Flame Sword. I know they did before. I don't know if they still do. Uh, but no, and I think there might be one or two other like Halo players that they sponsor, but they don't sponsor any other COD players either. Uh, but it's, it's a big deal because not only are they in it, we can get uh, bigger companies like maybe Mountain Dew will start sponsoring teams, maybe Dr. Pepper, Coca Cola, Pepsi. Doritos will get more into it. I mean, they've always kind of been part of the gaming community, but they haven't actually like handed out sponsorships to people. So that's also really cool. You got other companies, maybe like Samsung will start doing some stuff. You never know. Provide screens for tournaments and stuff like that. Partner with MLG, make things bigger and a better broadcast. And it's just, it's a big deal because it kind of brings more attention to the scene as it's growing and it's actually becoming phenomenally huge. I mean, he is making... Let's just round it up. He's making a freaking million dollars off of a year off of streaming. Now, I know there's other YouTubers out there like, okay, PewDiePie. PewDiePie may, probably makes like $4 million a year from YouTube alone. Uh, and that's a lot of god dang money. But the difference is, is PewDiePie is doing a different type of, different types of videos. And he's also in a different country. But there's also other US uh, YouTubers who are really big. Uh, I can't think of any right now that they're but they're around the same size as nature But the difference is they weren't going to tournaments and competing and getting the attention of someone like Red Bull Who will put them through and actually treat them as like one of their regular extreme sports athletes and put them through this huge training that they did They're doing this huge internet series called behind the green wall with optic gaming and explaining like the intricacies of a pro team and stuff like that so it's really it's really kind of how everything kind of fell together his sponsorship with red bull and then they decided to bring his whole team out and do this whole thing even though those two members on the team aren't there anymore they still did it and it's still they're still part of it and they're still i mean obviously both of those team members are going to be very happy that they had that experience i think both of them have actually expressed that uh so it's not like it's the end of the world uh, for red bull being like oh they dropped those two team members and now we can't do this series no they can absolutely do that series now uh still um but it's a big deal and and when they did that it brought a big amount of attention obviously from like places like the new york times and good morning america who come out and like Dude, look, this guy's got a really interesting story behind him. He's he's making a million dollars this year off of video games. That's that's something cool that people to, would like to hear. So I think it's really it's inspiring almost uh, to to be also a YouTuber playing Call of Duty and stuff like that. Even though I'm a tiny tiny little channel and I'm doing it for fun and as a hobby because I make like no money off of this at all. I just enjoy doing it and talking about things and getting some a little bit amount of feedback that I get and other people's opinions. I enjoyed doing it and that's something that he he started when he started he enjoyed doing it he loved competing i like competing too even though i never really got into the pro scene too much other than being a fan uh, actually i was more recently it was actually the beginning of black ops 2 is when i really start like the black ops 2 kind of champs is when i really started getting into call uh, mlg period like i knew about it i, I knew some players i knew about it a, a little bit around halo but i never really got into it until then and uh ever since then it's kind of like it's just it's fun to me it's it's really getting it out there as like call of duty and halo as a spectator sport and, it, and most people don't understand that until you actually understand the game and when people start understanding the game and then start watching it you're like oh this is actually kind of cool like with the and they got the casters and they got the broadcast modes and stuff like that it's it's growing exponentially in this past year and it's really really cool to see that and have like a player be highlighted by something as big as the new york times or good morning america now the interview on good morning america has not gone live yet i guess it was supposed to go live like two days ago uh that's what they were told or that's what nature was told by the producer or something like that but it didn't and it didn't go live today i don't think i couldn't find anything on it on the internet uh I'm, i'd imagine it's gonna go live because they did go to the house uh, nature posted a picture 
of the actual camera like pointed at him and stuff like that so they did do the interview uh so i guess we'll wait and see what happens there but it's it's the new york times story is being picked up by radio stations i remember seeing a tweet someone else was like dude dude they were talking about it on a radio station in my town and i'm like okay that's kind of cool and then i'm driving to work today and they freaking talked about it in my local radio station i'm like this is like a national story it's it's kind of cool uh but it's a big deal for mlg to help mlg grow to help twitch grow to help uh, uh, YouTube grow and it, it, Twitch was just bought out by Amazon for a billion dollars, which is a ton of money. And they can do whatever they want. I'm pretty sure Amazon is just like, you know what? We can keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Probably, I'd imagine so. And that could also eventually, when they get uh, the whole process switched over, because I don't think they have, uh, could also lead to better support, better partnerships, better just like streaming services, everything just being a, a bit better. Uh, uh, for everybody, for the viewer, for the streamer, uh, for the average user, and, and I, I think that's a really cool thing. So, uh, I mean, that's pretty much all I want, really wanted to talk about today, guys. Uh, it was just uh, something that I thought was super interesting and I really wanted to share with you guys. And I really want to get your guys' opinions. Like, I mean, if you're not an Optic fan, big deal. We're not talking necessarily about the Optic Gaming team. We're talking about this pro player, this specific pro player, sponsored by Red Bull, uh, uh, sponsored by Astro Gaming, picked up by New York Times to do an interview with them, created his fan base via YouTube and Twitch, moved over to MLG, and then uh, did the ABC Good Morning America interviews coming out, and it's the the story's going nationwide by after the New York Times story's going nationwide. So I want to hear your guys' opinions. Like, how do you think it's really going to affect gaming? I think it will. I think it can. Uh, if done the right way, obviously. So I'd really love to hear you guys' opinion. Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to leave a like and a favor on this video if you enjoyed it. And I'm on my way to 10,000 subscribers. I haven't really actually been like kind of getting out there and asking people to subscribe. I've always kind of tried to avoid that, but I really want to hit 10K already. Like we, we keep getting huge jumps and then we kind of go stagnant. Then we go huge jumps and then we go stagnant. And we get huge jumps. Like I want something consistent, guys. Let's go, let's hit 10K. I'm really on my way there. If you enjoy my content, Please hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys later. Peace.